Hello everybody, this is Dan, aka Entertainment WF, aka Page Wizard, aka Block. Anyways, this is a video response to Integral Math, who asked the question, why math? Well, which is which is something that also he supports too. It's just the thing is I want to add something else, because it sounds really good. Like, I love this video, it's just I want to give my opinion on what this is. Like, why? Why math? Anyways. To the heart of the issue, well, I get this question asked me all the time. Why should I learn X? Why should I learn this? Why are you telling me all these things? Why do I need all this information? Why? How is it going to help me? Like, say if you're in high school and you're learning pre-calculus, for example, you won't kind of connect the dots of why maybe you'd want to know this stuff. Well, that also is a problem with maybe the educational system, but when it comes down to mathematics itself, that's not mathematics, by the way. The real mathematics is what, say, when you're actually doing and studying actual mathematics. High school math is not real math. <laughs> that is just you learning tools to actually go after doing real mathematical problems. But anyways, I want to get down to the first and major point. Anyways, for mathematics, mathematics is a very, very important concept to understand, especially if you want to understand patterns. Patterns in the forms of space, involving structure, involving proof, involving numbers. Those are some, some examples of things you can quantify in mathematics. Usually people are more familiar with the number component because they never really get exposed to any of these other guys over here. But anyways... The idea here is that if you can encounter a problem mathematically, you can find a way of abstracting whatever you're trying to solve into some sort of deduction so that you can append an idea to it. So say if you have some sort of problem. So say if you have problem X that you're trying to solve in your daily life. Say, for example, if I don't know, I'm just going to give you a simple example. Say, say if you're folding your laundry and you want to find the fastest way of sorting your laundry without having any issues all the time, without randomly having to jumble it all together and put it in a pile and then deal with it later. Well, there are ways of solving that much quicker than, say, if you did it randomly. Well, at least on average case. Because sorting it random, randomly can have its consequences. It could take a little bit longer. It could be a little shorter. You want to guarantee it's very efficient? You can go and look up some algorithms that can solve that. There are sorting algorithms, for example. If you want to sort something, say if you want to search for something, there, if, heck, if you want to look for certain problems, they're out there. They're all in the mathematical fields. All the formal science is all about this kind of stuff. Formalizing, deducing, understanding and proving. That's a fundamental part of the proving part. That's what's something that nobody really understands about math unless say if you actually study math. Or heck any science for that matter because most even most empirical scientists don't understand the concept of a proof unless they studied a good amount of math. But I'm not trying to hear the bag on the empiricists. I'm here mainly to talk about math. Anyways, the idea is that if you encounter a problem, you should be able to abstract it. And once you abstract that problem, say if you have problem X, you should be able to find some way of solving that. Now, there are problems you can never solve. That's the thing about math. There are things that you can never solve in mathematics. For example, there's undecidable problems. Or there's impossibility theorems. There's certain things you can't do in math. But that's for the sake of argument. Let's not talk about that because that's another topic. It's a little bit more sophisticated than what I want, want to talk about right now. If you want to learn about that stuff, feel free to PM me. But anyways, the idea is with logical deduction, you can find and resolve issues that you're having, say, in your daily life. Say if you're encountering, say, like, a, like an integral maths video, he was talking much about problems that you encounter in daily life, say, from driving, or talking about speeds. Those are metrics, for example. Decisions based on metrics. Uh, the idea of being able to sort out an argument with somebody. Say if you don't know what to do about an argument, you have to ask the right questions. The idea of being skeptical. 
the product of logic is mathematics. The thing is, if you want to do math, like do make a very good argument for something, usually having a good solid background in mathematics will under help you understand things. For example, if you say uh, you're given variable Santa, say say if you're talking about the integral mass concept of driving with the speeds, uh, if you have a good idea of logic and how to apply to some sort of measure, so, so for example, if you know it's predicate, predicate calculus, you can append that to the ideas of the speeds, and you should be able to decide based on certain rules, say the laws within the driving prohibits, or and the physical laws involving driving. So, you can think of sort of things to attach to this thing. Likewise with that, you can think of it as an improvement of inductive reasoning. Say the idea of trying to go from one step, say, this is my argument, to saying, hey, my argument is right or wrong, and this is why I'm defending this argument. That's usually an induction step involved with this, unless it's purely deductive. But most stuff in real-world situations are usually inductive. It requires some sort of prediction. So, the idea is that if you have a better understanding of logic, and the better understanding of how to solve mathematical problems and being able to verify yourself using techniques in mathematics. Usually these actually can be found in a lot of systems, say algebra. Algebra it has a following set of axioms. Axioms are rules. Axioms, they do reflect the facts and they do have the ability to be proven in some aspects, depending on what kind of axioms you're talking about. There are not all of them that can be proven. It's another topic I can talk about another time. But the idea is that if you can take your problem right here or this argument and you want to append it to over here, you're going to need a big step. You need to make it to make sure it's really strong and firm, very rigid. You can basically make it so that that is just the most strictest line that nobody can ever break unless, say, they actually have a firm understanding of logic. That is a very practical application of mathematics. Because in daily life, you're going to encounter people from A to B to C to D to D, all the way on and on and on. You're going to encounter people in daily life, and you're going to have to defend yourself on certain things. Sometimes you're going to just have to be able to reflect yourself and communicate effectively. But the idea is, with inductive reasoning, you need to be able to take one instance of it and to stretch it onto and bring it to another instance up here. Well, how do you do this? Well, if you have a good, better understanding of induction, you should be able to get to that. Usually going from one instance to the next, to the next, to the next, you usually can take a little bit while to understand how induction properly works. That's why this stuff can be very useful. Another great way is, like, say, if we're talking about algebra, algebra itself, like I was mentioning slightly, is that algebraic rules naturally follow a lot of the same kind of argument kind of rules, except it's applied to quantities. Quantities. Not the fact that you're trying to convince an argument. These are very practical things. Algebra saves you a lot of time. Believe it or not, if you did not have the algebraic rules there, it might take a lot longer. It takes a lot longer than just that. I'll just put it at that. But that's just how it works. But I would honestly say that the reason why I would teach somebody something in math is the fact that I want to improve their ability to critically analyze the world around them. And somebody can say, well, I don't know, what about this guy that's only getting paid minimum wage? How is he going to use this stuff? Well, actually, he can perfectly fine. I'll give you a fair example. I remember when I was working in a factory by choice, I was working in a gown factory, and the thing is, people were normally doing them very these procedures very inefficiently, and I found ways of improving the productivity, and thus, at the same time, they would allow me to have more frequent breaks, because they were very satisfied with the work I was doing there, just because I had a better understanding of how algorithms work. And what are algorithms? They're mathematical constructs. <laughs> so this is why it's very important. You can get your jobs done way better if you have a better way of efficiently doing them. So if you have the better, more efficient ways of doing them, then you're even better off. So in work, say if you're doing repetitive tasks, you can find more efficient ways of solving those problems until you reach the benchmark point where you can solve things much quicker you should be able to get more money out of it, 
is say if you're making a business or say if you're working for somebody. It's very productive. You can apply to finances. In fact, a lot of the stuff you see in finances today usually involves algorithms or using a lot of differential analysis. As Integral Math was pointing out, there's a lot of continuous math in there too. Like, I myself am mainly a discrete math guy, but I have a much appreciation like Integral Math would. But the thing is, the idea is that you have to be able to demonstrate yourself. And the most best tool out there is mathematics, because without that, you don't have science. You, you would not have science without mathematics, because that is the bedrock of all science, is mathematics. Because without mathematics, you can't form models effectively. If you can't form the models that you want, you can't say much about what you're dealing with. Thus, it's really not really, really hard to form procedures, which are algorithms. <laughs> But anyways, I want to point out another important fact, uh, the idea of applications of mathematics. Mathematics is all around us in this world. Technology, technology itself, relies on the fact you understand mathematics. The abstractions that you see on your screen, say if you're on your YouTube right now, usually those are abstractions that involved the graphical user interface of the window that you're looking at. But all of it itself is mathematics, all formally defined, all formally programmed by a programmer or developer. The idea is, if you have a better understanding of logic and mathematics, you should be able to code up some rather cool applications. Or, hey, have a better appreciation for what you're dealing with, because there's a computer itself, the formal construct of what a computer is, is based off the fundamental limits of mathematics. The computer itself is based off of that, in theory. And that's why it's so important to understand that mathematics are, is all around you. So anything that has a CPU in it, anything that has, say, yeah, like an abstraction, say if you have a collection of something, it's all an abstraction of some sort of mathematical object or model. At least the idea is that you can understand. But with that, it comes to this idea of technology. So technology relies on the fact you know math. Like, if you can't operate on basic arithmetic, you're not going to get very far in this world. Because you need to be able to handle money. That's a fundamental. Money, as much as I hate to say it, is a necessity in this world. Especially in the Western world. Well, Western world. <laughs> The thing about it is, if technology is the way of the future, and if it's used improperly, we can all blow ourselves up. So the more we can understand and rely on formal methods and understanding and producing logical chains to solve problems, the better off we are. With that in mind, predictive power increases by the more mathematics you know, not besides the sake of being able to prove things. Proving yourself is very, very powerful. You'll never quite believe unless you actually try it. Try to show that you're wrong on something. Because knowing how to accept being wrong is the very first step of being good at mathematics. Once you're able to accept that you're wrong, will be the fundamental part of being a very good learner in life. And mathematics serves as a very good soul and entity to understand how to overcome this idea of being wrong. With that in mind, lastly, the formal understanding of mathematics is fundamental as you're talking about things of being right and wrong. And when something is indeed wrong, the best course of action is to understand it and improve and learn from it. That's why math is so important.